I was playing Dungeons and Dragons the other day, and by the other day, I mean like a year and a half ago, and my players were in combat with a monster. This was a pretty standard fight, but things ended up getting kind of dicey. No pun intended there. It was kind of intended. I, I wrote it in the script, but I didn't think, you know, whatever. Let's, let's just get on with the story anyway. So one of my players ended up getting knocked unconscious. I'm generally pretty nice to my players, so this was actually a somewhat rare occurrence, which is maybe not how a dungeon master should operate, but I just end up wanting all the characters to be friends, and I don't know. But yeah, after the player was knocked out, the very next turn, they were quickly healed by another player and back on their feet as if nothing happened. Then they quickly attacked and defeated the monster. After the session, there was something about this fight that bothered me. I think it was the lack of impact of not only being knocked out, but the lack of impact of damage as a whole. There were no lasting effects on the character. It really felt like there should be some sort of repercussions after being beaten senseless. And I'm not even talking about mechanically here. I'm talking about from a character standpoint. You would expect a character to at least be somewhat traumatized or afraid or something after being knocked out by a terrifying monster. So when working on my game, I kept all this in mind and I think I found a way to solve this problem by allowing damage to be impactful to the character narratively as well as mechanically. Hi, I'm Nathan and this is my tabletop RPG deck builder called Soul. Today we're going to be talking about my new equipment system, items, and how that relates to health. When I was trying to solve this problem, two game systems kept popping to mind. One was Mech Warrior's slot-based inventory system. Each weapon or component was equipped onto your mech onto a slot on their body. And when that part was damaged, it would no longer function. And the other one was the singular time I LARPed. Yeah, that thing where you run around in a local park and hit nerds with foam swords. It was high school, I don't know, what, what do you want from me? I'm totally kidding, I don't have anything against LARPing. I mean, look at me, I'm making a tabletop role-playing game by myself fun. Anyway, but yeah, the specific LARP I went to used a limb-based system for health. If you get hit in the arm, you can't use it anymore, and if you get hit in that limb again, you're dead, essentially. So really the same concept as Mech Warrior, just simplified. So with that in mind, I decided to make a slot-based inventory system with health as well. This will help a player sympathize with their character more. Damage generally is pretty nebulous. A player having 25 out of 100 health doesn't really mean anything to them, other than that it's kinda low. However, a character having two broken legs and a dislocated arm is probably something they can relate to. This also forces a player to adapt to their situation, both in a mechanical sense and a narrative one. Now, the rest of the details I'm a bit fuzzy on, so bear with me a bit. I have two separate ideas on how this will lay out. One is a character sheet that will look something like this, having a slot for each body part, head, shoulders, knees, toes, etc. except not really that at all, and more like head, body, right and left arm, right and left hand, legs, and feet. I felt like this was a good idea, but after a while, I felt like it was sort of limiting. How many cool arm items would there be compared to like actual weapons or items you'd hold in your hand? Or say you have a character who has a shirt that you like, but you also want a jacket over it. I'm only kind of kidding with that example. Anyway, so instead I just tried a different format, going with head, body, legs, right and left hand, and three utility slots that could take any sort of item. I was hoping this would give a player a little bit more freedom and flexibility with builds without forcing them to only do one type of item per slot. So not sure which way to go, but I'll figure it out soon. There's also a different problem other than me not being able to make up my mind. It's that I've been planning on doing customizable items. These would be made up of cards and therefore need multiple slots. This is going to be similar to a lot of war games you see these days, where you can equip different add-ons to your weapons or your other equipment. So either of these systems would look something like this. This is cool and all, but I fear it's kind of a lot. Like, likely this many cards will interrupt the flow of the game, but I still might try it anyway. And if it fails, maybe I'll scrap the idea, or maybe make it simpler by using tokens instead of cards or something. Either way, this is the current prototype, so let's talk about how it relates to health. Which also brings me to another way I'm planning on making damage more impactful. Having two types of health. Physical and mental health. Physical health will be linked directly to each item slot, like we've talked about. Then when a character is attacked and one of these item slots reaches zero health, then they will no longer function. Just like my Mech Warrior example. 
Now, I'm not sure how someone will choose to target these slots. One of the ideas is having a D8 and have the damage dealt to whichever slot that the dice rolls. Then having more specific abilities that allow you to target exact slots. There could even be a mechanic for expanding more concentration, the player's energy source, to target a specific slot. As a side note, another potential for this slot-based inventory system is to have status effects applied directly over item cards. This could allow for cool different effects. For instance, having different statuses like broken, dislocated, bleeding, etc. Now, mental health, on the other hand, is a separate health pool that gets damaged whenever your physical health goes down or when you are psychically damaged in some other way. If your mental health reaches zero, you go unconscious. Like I said, this is linked to your physical health. So let's say your hand takes three damage, then your mental health will also take three damage. This health pool will be much larger and likely be able to take multiple equipment slots being brought to zero in order for your mental health to be brought to zero as well. There's also a potential for hitting already destroyed physical slots, dealing additional damage to mental health. Unsure of that one though, still toying around with it. I'm also not really sure how I feel about the symbol I chose for mental health currently. I'm choosing the psychology logo or symbol that people use because I already have used the brain for intelligence and concentration. So I don't know, I, I just work here. Anyway, as per usual, I'd like to address any problems that I think that this system could have. I think what's most likely to cause problems is what other games call snowballing. Unfortunately, with players becoming weaker and weaker over a battle, they could get worse and worse, and then inevitably die. In short, it's punishing. I generally don't find myself drawn to in these sort of games, or at least when it comes to like video games and stuff. However, I think the realism could lead to better storytelling, which is inevitably the biggest goal for this project. Although I really want to make sure it's not too punishing, because it's not really what I'm going for. I'm not looking for something where your characters are dying all the time, but we'll see how it goes. The only other thing I could see being an issue would be the sheer number of cards that a player has to look at. Granted, this wouldn't be much different than any other game. You'd usually see this in a character sheet, so this could be okay, but I worry if I do keep the customizable weapons, this could end up slowing the game down a lot. But yeah, I think a character struggling to succeed and seeing them overcome these obstacles despite being broken and bloodied is a lot more interesting than a character who gets knocked down and is perfectly fine moments later. At least, that's what I think. Thanks for making it to the end of the video. It's been a long time since I posted. There's been a lot going on in my life, which uh, biggest one of which is I just moved to a new house. But yeah, I'm going to be hopefully trying to uh, work exclusively on content creation and game development over the next year and give it an honest shot. But I'm also working on a lot of house renovations and that kind of stuff, getting everything together. So, so yeah, it might not be as frequent to start, but once I do get into the swing of things, you're going to be seeing a lot more of me. Um, I've also started streaming. Uh, I'm trying to do Tuesdays, Thursdays. But yeah, like I said, currently busy with housework. Uh, so kind of juggling this and, and that. My uh, recording setup right now looks like this. Uh, so <laughs> definitely pretty temporary. And even with this sort of setup, it's still pretty echoey. So um, yeah, anyway, thanks for watching. And I'll see you in the next one.